This is Elias, and you are watching Ophthalmology with MAS. Today, we are going to do all of the examination in a darkroom test. So, the examinations in a darkroom test are basically divided into two. One is ophthalmoscopy. And the other is retinoscopy. Ophthalmoscopy has three components. One is called distant direct ophthalmoscopy. Direct ophthalmoscopy and then indirect ophthalmoscopy. So the first thing that you are asked to do is the instruments and the first thing that you have to do is to differentiate between an ophthalmoscope and a retinoscope. Now an ophthalmoscope has a viewing aperture and this is directed towards the patient while the examiner sees through this small window or hole. It also has an aperture dial where you can change the size of the aperture depending on the pupil being dilated or of a smaller size. And then you have a filter aperture and then you have a dipteric dial which is to focus on things. So if it's on a zero that means there's an emetropia and if it is in a red color that means you're in a minus so myopic and if you are doing it in on the green side you are correcting the hyperopic refractive error now when you are shining a light you can change the aperture size first examination that we are going to do is the distant direct ophthalmoscopy and for that you need to have the lights completely dim and that is why this is called the dark room test so after dimming the lights, you are going to hold the ophthalmoscope in the same hand as the eye that you are examining and view the patient from the same eye as the patient's eye. So basically, if you're looking at the right eye, you are using your right hand and looking from your right eye. So right, right, right. And when you're looking at the left eye, you are holding the ophthalmoscope in your left hand and while looking at the left eye, left hand, left eye. So the first command that you have to give is after be coming on the same eye level as the patient and being at an arm's length from the patient, the first command you're going to give the patient is to look at a distance so that the patient is not accommodating and thus not causing the pupil to constrict. And then after asking to look at a distance, you are going to shine a light in his eye so left, 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 and then view in the pupil. When you're examining the right eye, you're holding it in your right hand, looking from your right eye while the patient looks at a distance. Once this is done, you are going to ask the patient to look to the right and then straight ahead and then left and then straight ahead and then up and then straight ahead and then down and straight ahead. So basically, you are remaining stable while the patient moves his eye in either direction. So basically, what we are doing with an ophthalmoscope is that we are shining a light which passes through the pupil after having passed through the cornea, crosses the lens, crosses the transparent retina and is reflected back from a rich blood supplied colloid and then is examined by the examiner. So if it is passing through all of these layers without any of the media being opaque, then what you will see is a red glow. Now, if there is an opacity in the cornea, 
or any activity in the anterior chamber or a lens opacity meaning a cataract or any vitreous hemorrhage or a retinal detachment then either the red glow will be absent or depending on the density of the opacity it would be faint so the first thing that you are examining through a distant direct ophthalmoscopy is the red glow which can either be present absent or faint now alternatively if there is a localized opacity in the cornea in the lens or in the vitreous or there is a localized retinal attachment what you see is a black opacity against a red background so the second thing if the red glow is present is seeing whether there is any localized opacity that is present the third thing which is seen through a distant direct ophthalmoscopy is determining the location of the opacity now think of the eye as a ball and this ball moves at a nodal point which passes through the posterior aspect of the lens so this let's assume is the nodal point and anything which is in front of the nodal point is going to move with the direction of the eyes if the eye is looking up this opacity is going to move up and when the eye is looking down this opacity moves down alternatively when the eye is looking on the right the opacity moves on the right and when the eye is looking on the left the opacity moves on the left side any opacity which is in front of the nodal point meaning in front of the lens that is the cornea or the anterior chamber is going to move in the direction of patient's eye movement now if the opacity is at the nodal point when you rotate the eye the nodal point does not move so such opacity will always be stable irrespective of the eye movement that means whenever you see a stable opacity which is not moving with the eye movement or against the eye movement that means it is because of a lens opacity now the third option is any opacity which is behind the nodal point and the opacity is at the back if you move the eye to the left the opacity moves to the right and when you move the eye to the right the opacity moves to the left and when you move the eye up the opacity goes down and when you move the eye down the opacity goes up so, so anything which is behind the nodal point will move against the eye movement which would tell you that the opacity is either in the vitreous or at the retina now we are going to see some magnified photos showing the red glow so this first photo shows a very brisk red glow in the pupil uh, the next picture shows cortical immature cataracts showing vacuoles starting from 7 o'clock till about 11 o'clock against a red background and uh, you also see these wedges starting from 3 o'clock till 5 o'clock against a red background and the third picture shows immature cortical cataract again where you see wedges against a red background these wedges are seen very prominently from six and a half to about nine o'clock this picture shows a very faint red glow or a orangish yellowish glow which shows there is a problem at the back 
you will also see uh, an opacity in the center, which once you move the eye, you'll be able to see that it's static and therefore in the lens. Now the next picture shows uh, orange glow or not, uh, which is a very faint red glow. And you also see these vacuoles generalized all over. So this is probably a cortical cataract with a retinal detachment. Thank you.